Hey everyone, and in this video, I'll be walking through exactly how to use a VPN. Whether you're trying to unblock content, stay anonymous online, or just want a bit more control over your internet privacy. Now, I've personally used ExpressVPN, NordVPN, and Surfshark for the past few years. And while I tend to reach for Express the most, I'll be showing you how each of them works, so you can see which one might make the most sense for your situation. And just a quick heads up, if you do end up wanting to try any of these, I'll include links in the description with the best discounts I could find, so feel free to check those out if you're interested. So once you've signed up for one of these VPNs, the first thing to do is just download and install the app on your device. Each of them has apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even things like Fire Stick or Smart TVs, so you're totally covered. And then once you're in, you'll see some key features that are available across all three VPNs, including a kill switch and split tunneling. The kill switch is a really helpful safety feature. It basically cuts your internet connection if the VPN ever drops, so your real IP address doesn't leak by accident. It's just a way to make sure your connection stays private, even if something unexpected happens. Then there's split tunneling, which lets you choose which apps go through the VPN and which ones don't. For example, you might want to run your streaming apps through the VPN, but let things like your banking app use your normal internet. And Surfshark actually calls this feature Bypasser, but it works the same way. Now when it comes to choosing a server, the experience is slightly different depending on which VPN you're using. ExpressVPN takes a very straightforward approach by organizing its servers by continent. So for example, if you're trying to access US content, you just go to the Americas section, pick the country, and then choose a city. They cover for 105 countries and currently offer more than 3,000 servers, which gives you plenty of flexibility. NordVPN also has a list of countries you can scroll through to select a server, and it has one of the largest networks, covering 165 countries with over 7,900 servers to choose from. And then Surfshark keeps things clean and minimal. You get a simple modern list, so it's really easy to scroll, find the country you want, and connect. They support around 100 countries with over 3,200 servers, which still gives you a wide range to work with. Now, when it comes to overall security, each of these VPNs does a solid job of keeping your connection private. They all use strong encryption and offer core protections that most people will want in place by default. What's nice, is that you don't have to worry about tweaking a bunch of settings to stay safe. Everything is built in and works behind the scenes. So whether you're streaming, torrenting, or just browsing privately, you're protected right out of the gate. That said, each VPN does have a few extra tools that help it stand out a bit more, depending on what you're looking for. For example, NordVPN offers a few advanced options like threat protection, dark web monitoring, and double VPN, which adds an extra layer of encryption by routing your traffic through two servers instead of one. Surfshark, on the other hand, includes things like CleanWeb for blocking ads and malware, as well as multi-hop and camouflage mode, which help mask your VPN use entirely, which is especially useful in places with more restricted internet. And while all three of these VPNs have been independently audited multiple times with no logging ever found, ExpressVPN stands out here with something we don't often get to see, a real-world test. Back in 2017, one of their servers was seized by authorities during an investigation, and no user data was recovered, which backed up up their no logs policy in a way few other VPNs have been able to demonstrate. So depending on how much extra functionality you want, it's helpful to know where each one places its focus. Now in terms of speed, each VPN has a specific protocol that tends to deliver the best performance. ExpressVPN uses its own lightweight protocol, which is built for quick, stable connections. NordVPN performs best with Nordlynx, which is based on WireGuard but optimized for speed and privacy, and Surfshark also supports WireGuard, which gives you a solid balance of speed and security. Security, so just make sure to enable it in the settings for the fastest results. Now let's walk through how to actually use each of these VPNs. With ExpressVPN, you'll start by opening the app and navigating to the continent you want. Then just choose a country, like the US, and select a city, say Chicago, and hit connect. You can even use a site like whatismyipaddress.com to double check that you're connected to the right server. With NordVPN, you'll want to first go into the settings and make sure features like the kill switch and split tunneling are enabled if you want to use them. Then from there, you can either use the list or the map to find a server, like one in Italy, click the location, and you're connected. And for Surfshark, head into settings and make sure the kill switch and bypasser are turned on if you want them active. Then select the WireGuard protocol for the best speed. From there, just choose your location, maybe something like France, and hit connect. Now, one area where ExpressVPN really shines is just how quick and responsive the app feels. Whether you're opening the app, 
connecting to a server, or switching locations, it's all really fast. The app starts up quickly, connects in just a few seconds, and overall just feels lightweight and easy to use. So if speed and ease of use are a priority for you, especially if you plan on switching locations often, this is one area where ExpressVPN pulls ahead. But the other two options also bring a lot to the table. NordVPN is probably the most well-rounded overall. It gives you tons of features, excellent performance, and a solid reputation for privacy. So if you're looking for a full suite of tools without overpaying, it's a really solid pick. And Surfshark continues to be one of the best value choices out there. It's the most affordable of the three, and still includes all the premium features. So it's ideal if you're looking for something budget friendly without giving up functionality. Now in terms of pricing, all three of these VPNs offer monthly and long-term plans, and you'll always get the best value by going with a longer subscription. It's not uncommon to save over 60% when you choose a one or two year plan compared to paying month to month. For example, with ExpressVPN, you can choose from a monthly, one-year, or two-year plan, and each tier offers a basic, pro, or advanced version depending on what features you want. The monthly plan is $12.99, but if you go with a two-year basic plan, it drops down to as low as $3.49 per month. Now, one thing worth mentioning here is that a lot of people assume they'll only need a VPN for a month or two, so they go with the shortest plan, but in most cases, they end up keeping it much longer. So that monthly price adds up quickly. If you think there's even a chance you'll be using it for a while, it's usually worth locking in the lower rate. And regardless of which VPN you end up going with, they all include a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you try one out and decide it's not the right fit, you can get a full refund no questions asked. That also means there's no real risk in starting with a longer term plan if you want to take advantage of the lower price. If things change, or you decide to switch to a monthly option later on, you're still covered. And that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with a VPN. And just a reminder, I've included discount links and in-depth reviews down in the description, so be sure to check those out. So hopefully you found this walkthrough helpful. If so, please leave a thumbs up, as I always appreciate that. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I love getting getting to answer as many of those as I can. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.